Well, good morning. For those of you who have traveled in from out of town, welcome to Kearney. First off, I wanted to thank Rebecca for reaching out and inviting me to speak today at the Nebraska State Assembly Summer Workshop. It is definitely an honor. I really commend the leadership this year in putting together a strong lineup today of talks for the summer workshop. When asked to give this presentation, I was already scheduled to be out of town, so I apologize for not being able to attend in person, but want to thank all of you for allowing me to still present remotely. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman. I'm a board certified urologist at Kearney Urology Center PC. I'm also host and founder of the Prostate Health Podcast, a podcast designed to better educate men and those who care for them regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions. For those needing to dive in even deeper, I also created the Prostate Health Academy, packed full of in-depth lessons, resources, and a private community forum for Academy members. So today, I'm excited to be giving a talk on aquablation therapy, which is a new and innovative surgical treatment for benign prosthetic hyperplasia, or BPH. In January of this year, we were proud to be the first urology practice in the seven-state region, including Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, to perform aquablation for BPH which is offered at Kearney Regional Medical Center. Word is definitely getting out about it. Not only have men in our region been taking advantage of this new option to manage their BPH, but we have also had patients travel in so far from Omaha and Denver as well. We even have just recently received inquiries from patients looking to travel to Kearney from Idaho, Oregon, and Washington for aquablation as it is not yet being offered yet in their home states. But before we get into this exciting new technology, I want to first talk a little bit about the little gland, uh, which can cause so much trouble. Many men are not aware of the function of their prostate or the impact it can have on their lives. It is a small walnut-sized gland, which is located below the bladder. The urethra, which drains urine from the bladder, actually passes through the prostate. The prostate's primary function is to produce the majority of the fluid for the male ejaculate, which helps nourish and transport sperm. BPH, also called prostate gland enlargement, is a common condition as men get older. It is a benign condition and not related to prostate cancer. The prostate usually begins to grow around the age of 40 to 50 years old. BPH is a very common condition. BPH is a significant men's health disease that impacts 50% of men over 50 years old. Just think about that. That is one in every two men over the age of 50. And that rate continues to increase every decade with over 70% of men in their 60s. 99% of men who have BPH say that it impacts their quality of life making it by far the number one reason that men visit a urologist. As the prostate enlarges with age, it can start to press on the urethra and ultimately cause blockage of the urine flow from the bladder. So as the prostate begins to block the urethra, it can cause bothersome urinary symptoms. These symptoms can be broken down into two categories. The first is that it can affect the ability to hold the urine in, inappropriately resulting in bothersome symptoms of urinary urgency, frequency, getting up in the middle of the night to urinate, and incontinence of urine. It can also result in difficulty with emptying the bladder. Some of those obstructive symptoms include having to strain to void, pain or burning with urination, difficulty in starting the stream, intermittent urine stream, and urinary retention, sometimes requiring the need for Foley catheter placement. All of this can really result in a negative impact on quality of life, including disrupted sleep, men limiting their activities and planning their day around the nearest bathroom, as well as having a potential impact on erectile dis or ejaculatory function. Applications of an enlarged prostate can include urinary retention, sometimes requiring the need for a Foley catheter placement, urinary tract infection, with incomplete bladder emptying can increase the risk of infection 
with the urine becoming more stagnant and becoming a breeding ground for bacteria, bladder stones can also form in the bladder with incomplete bladder emptying. Bladder stones can themselves also be a source of infection, bladder irritation, and blockage, sometimes acting like a ball valve on the bladder outlet, preventing urine from flowing freely. Ongoing bladder obstruction from the prostate can also negatively affect the bladder health with resultant bladder damage. There are two muscles in your body you definitely don't want working against the blockage. The first is your heart and the second is your bladder. The bladder can get stretched out and weaken with time. As a result, the muscular wall of the bladder no longer contracts properly, making it harder for the bladder to empty. We also start to see fibrous bands starting to form within the bladder, which we call trabeculations, but also small diverticula or outpouchings in the bladder wall can form as well. The kidneys can also take a hit as well. Increased pressure in the bladder from urinary retention can directly damage the kidneys and sometimes even result in the need for kidney dialysis. When looking at options for men and their BPH, the first option includes observation, which is also called or sometimes referred to as watchful waiting. Watchful waiting is considered when symptoms are very mild. Now, historically, medications were the next step in the progression of treatment prior to surgery, mainly because when medications came onto the scene back in the 90s, we really didn't have minimally invasive options to fix the problem, so men reluctantly took the medication, just kicking the can down the road. What we are now finding is that many men are not satisfied with their drug therapy for BPH. Two out of three men are not satisfied with the effectiveness. And nearly half of men did not have a clinically significant improvement in their symptoms. In order for it to be clinically significant, the prostate symptom score should drop by at least four points. What we are also seeing with medication is that many men are non-compliant with taking the medication. Population studies show that 60% of men are not compliant in taking their BPH medication. Some of the potential causes of men not wanting to take their medication include side effects, lack of efficacy, the cost of the medication, and the inconvenience of taking a daily pill. So with millions of men non-compliant or discontinuing medications, yet not wanting to elect for more invasive surgery, a significant number of men were seeking alternative solutions, minimally invasive surgical therapy. In the past, patients have had to compromise on outcomes because of the technology constraints of BPH surgical options. Prostates really vary in size and shape, which are factors that guide treatment selection. Resective technologies remove tissue and tend to prioritize symptom relief at the cost of sexual function and continence preservation, which have substantial constraints such as variability, time intensity, and size shape limitations brought about by the way the technology works. A survey of patients revealed that 82% of men do not want to sacrifice sexual function for symptom relief. New technology entered the market to maintain sexual function by not removing tissue, including the Eurolift procedure. And despite these advances, 70% of men still believe there's a trade-off in BPH surgery. Innovation in the space had missed the mark. There was an unmet clinical need to eliminate the trade-off between safety and efficacy and predictability to treat prostates of all sizes and shapes. Insert aquablation therapy. Aquablation is the only size and shape independent BPH solution without compromise. It allows surgeons and patients to prioritize symptom relief along with sexual and urinary function by bringing clarity, consistency, and control to BPH surgery. The technology gives you clarity by enabling visualization of the entire prostate for customized treatment planning consistency through robotic execution for predictable and reproducible resection, and gives you control over minimizing the variables that impact outcomes. Aquablation is the only BPH procedure that offers simultaneous imaging of cystoscopy and two ultrasound planes to see the entire prostate. 
The most unique feature of aqua ablation therapy is the ability to create an intraoperative surgical map customized specifically to the patient. Robotic execution of resection allows for consistent resection time across the full range of prostate sizes with an impressive average resec resection time of only 5.8 minutes compared against the scattered TERP data set where the resection is done entirely manually. Displaying the reproducibility and predictability regardless of the prostate profile. The robotic system gives control over variables that impact safety and efficacy outcomes as seen with the clinical data. The WATER and WATER2 studies were the first two clinical studies that re resulted in high rates of continence and sexual function preservation, reported at 99% and 100% respectively. In the most recent data set, an all-comer commercial study, Open Water, resection technique was refined and saw even higher rates of ejaculatory function preservation at 92%. The average prostate symptom score improvement was 16 points persisting up to three years post-op. Similarly, average flow improvement was 11 milliliters per second carried out up to three years post-op. Aqua ablation therapy offers the results of a resective technology with the safety profile of a non-resective technology. Next, I would like to run through the actual steps of the procedure. So after the induction of general anesthesia, the patient is then moved and placed in the low lithotomy position where he is prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. The transrectal ultrasound is then inserted per rectum and stabilized using the articulating arm. After the ultrasound image is optimized, the 24 French aqua beam handpiece is then inserted per urethra And then the handpiece is secured using the articulating arm. The aquablation treatment zones are then planned using real-time ultrasound to visualize the contour of the prostate and the depth and radial angles of resection, which are defined in the transverse view. Now in the sagittal view, the aqua bean nozzle is identified in position registered with the software. The treatment contours are then adjusted to confirm to the intended resection margins. The median lobe, bladder neck, and viromontanum are marked and confirmed in the treatment contour. A safety zone is created one centimeter proximal to the viromontanum which is highlighted in yellow. This allows for preservation of antegrade ejaculatory function. The aqua ablation treatment is then started following the resection contour confirmed under ultrasound guidance. A high velocity water jet follows the predefined contour, which was mapped out. You can see here the water jet rapidly moving back and forth, treating the lateral and median obstructing prostate tissue. Now, once the water jet reaches the vero protection zone, the treatment will then start to selectively treat the right apical lobe and then move again to treat the left apical lobe thus sparing the middle varomontanum area. Typically a second pass of the water jet is performed to remove any residual obstructive tissue. The total time for the water jet ablation typically only takes on average five to seven minutes depending on the size of the prostate gland. When the treatment is completed, the aqua beam device is then removed and then we use a bipolar loop electrode to gently remove some of the tissue debris at the bladder neck and to ensure hemostasis. A 24 French three-way Foley catheter is then placed to continuous bladder irrigation at the conclusion of the procedure. Intraoperative cystoscopy and ultrasound view of a completed obstructive 
prostatic urethra. Post-op, we see a significant amount of tissue has been resected, now with a wide open prostatic channel. As far as what to expect postoperatively, as mentioned during our procedure video, patients will wake up with a 24 French three-way Foley catheter to continuous bladder irrigation. Most patients are kept overnight to wean off irrigation, although we are looking to identify appropriate candidates for same day discharge, especially if the procedure was performed in the morning. We typically keep the catheter in place anywhere from one to three days. Patients really do not complain of much pain after the procedure, just the discomfort from the catheter. Then maybe some mild burning and with urination the first one to two days, uh, and even up to a couple of weeks following catheter removal. We typically have them avoid heavy activity for two to three weeks. The technology is backed by a robust body of clinical data, including a randomized controlled trial against TERP, the only study on large glands, and an all-comer commercial study, all of which prove that aqua ablation therapy is safe and effective and the only size and shape independent BPH solu solution without compromise. The clinical data is recognized by major surgical societies and is included in surgical practice guidelines. It has also been evaluated in 100 publications in top urology journals. I just wanted to share a bit about my experience since starting to perform aquablation. This month, I will be approaching 50 patients treated with aquablation since we started the program at Kearney Regional Medical Center in January of this year. As far as patient selection, these patients are typically those who may not otherwise be a candidate for office-based approaches such as Eurolift, either given prostate gland size being too large for those procedures or having a large intravesical median lobe. Not only is this taking place for many men or many of the men we were previously performing TERPs on, but also those very large prostates that required robotic simple prostatectomy. Now, of course, because still not every payer is currently covering aquablation, we are still doing some of these procedures, including TERP and simple prostatectomy, where the insurance would not cover aquablation. And with that being said, coverage for aquablation continues to expand with it being covered by Medicare and more and more private payers starting to add aquablation to their approved BPH procedures allowed. Now, looking at the outcomes, now having seen many of my initial 40 patients back in clinic, they are all very happy with the results and are happy that they had the procedure. We're also keeping track of post-op symptom score and are seeing a tremendous improvement in their prostate symptom score compared to pre-op numbers. We've had many men that had urinary retention requiring indwelling Foley catheter going into the surgery and have been able to get all of them free of their catheter and voiding again. For those without a catheter pre-op, many had elevated post-void residuals on bladder scan, and those numbers have drastically improved post-op with minimal residual on bladder scan following aquablation. This is also an efficient and fairly predictable procedure when looking at OR time. The aquablation treatment times are ranging at only four to 10 minutes per patient. And again, that is the time it takes for the water jet to make two passes through the prostate. And the total procedure time, that is from the time we place the ultrasound probe per rectum to the time we place the catheter at the end of the procedure is around 35 to 40 minutes. This is a significant increase in OR efficiency, especially for the bigger prostates where we were previously having to perform robotic simple prostatectomy where the robotic console time itself was around 50 to 55 minutes. We still have enough time here. I wanted to quick play a clip of one aquablation patient who has been open about his personal experience with BPH and how it was affecting his quality of life and his experience with aquablation. When you first start having the problem and you gotta go, the worst part is, is you stand there and you can't go. I'm 62, really active. I take really good care of myself. There was really no easy solutions. But it happens to be a urinary tract problem that could ultimately lead to an erection problem or a sexual dysfunction problem. Everybody says, welcome to the club, and I don't want to be part of that club. Ed's always been full of energy and larger than life. When I noticed that he was not the same, I knew that the BPH was causing him a big problem. He just wasn't as engaged. 
BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, essentially is an enlargement of the prostate. And in simple terms, when it starts to get enlarged like that, you can't go pee. When I laid down, it seemed to put more pressure on my bladder. Hence, I would get up almost every hour on the hour. You can imagine what it does to your sleep. I mean, literally towards the end, it became just like having a bad nightmare. And I find myself getting a severe lack of sleep. Well, that affected my mood, my stress levels. It seemed to cause me constant worry because it was always on my mind. When the person you love starts to change, it's an unsettling feeling. It started to affect things that we were doing. I mean, intimacy has been a really big part of our relationship and that was definitely affected. But ultimately you kind of mask over what's going on. And I think we can try to kid ourselves that I can deal with this. But once you get into a medium to severe BPH problem, you really don't have much choice. You're gonna to have to have some type of surgery. The meds don't work at that point. I did all the research possible. I mean, I went on every website quizzing the doctors and I found out that there's probably three or four different procedures. They all have potential side effects. And in men's health, I don't think this is something anybody should fool around with. I really didn't want to compromise. When I came across the aquablation, I realized that I didn't have to make those compromises. All I had to do was make the choice. For me, it was a no brainer to go forward with the aquablation. The procedure overall was quick. He didn't have any complications. I could not believe the result that I had. It was immediate. I forgot what my real freedom was like. I had no problems, no side effects from a sexual standpoint. It's just amazing that I don't think about going to the bathroom anymore. It was like not only just treating me, but treating my life, my lifestyle. It gave it all back to me again. Now he's back to his old self. It's actually changed our relationship for the better. It's just completely different. And we've completely reconnected. I'm really grateful for that. I have my best friend back. You don't have to grow distance in your relationship because of something like BPH. For anybody out there who's going through similar things, I would not hesitate to look into this procedure. It's so different now. I mean, to say it's a 180 is an understatement because once you've been on both sides of it, it's life changing and life altering. It's freedom. Boy, let me tell you, I made the right decision. Well, thank you again for inviting me to speak this morning at the workshop. Hopefully you have all gained not only some knowledge about prostate enlargement, but also about one of the new exciting treatment options we have for BPH. For doing well here on time, I think we may have a few minutes to open it up for questions. Um, once I get connected again here via video, and if, if that's not working, at the very least we can connect via audio. Well, thanks again.